Hey, welcome back to our video on key logging. In the first few videos that we've made on this, we have a successful program to capture all the keystrokes and send them into a text file, and then occasionally send that text file to an external email address. So what we should do next is to see if we can uh, figure out how to detect when this is happening. So first of all, let's take a look at some real simple techniques that programmers and hackers would use to hide their software, and then what you should look for if you are searching for somebody that is key logging you. So first of all, you notice this is a dead giveaway. We've got an application running in the taskbar, and when you look at it, it's kind of suspicious that every time you type a letter, it appears on the screen, right? Okay, so how do you hide that? Well, it's pretty simple. If you want to make an application disappear, you close the app and then check the properties of the project here. So let's go to Keylogger 3 and check properties. And the simplest way is to go and check where the application properties are. The output type right now is console application. Well, if I switch it to Windows application, uh, it's not a Windows application. It won't display in any window at all. It'll just not display. And so now when I run the application, it should be completely invisible. Um, so is it running? Let's see, it says it's running. It's occupying memory and uh, no errors. Doesn't appear down on the taskbar but it is running. So if I were to type a few things, we would see more uh, collections. Let's, let's see if it's working. I'm going to take the keystrokes file and delete it. And let's see, it's out of here. And now back into here, I'm going to type a few more letters. And sure enough, the keystrokes just reappeared, and it told me that I typed those letters there. So it is, it is certainly running. Well, how do you kill a program that you can't click on? So click on the task bar and choose Start Task Manager. And then you can see in the list of here all the tasks that are running. And let's see, I'm going to sort them by name here. And sure enough, there is something called Keylogger 3. Now, if you're suspicious that somebody's doing some nefarious work on your computer, the first thing you would do is go to the Task Manager and see what's there. So in this case, it's simple. Just choose Keylogger 3 and end the process. And it'll say, are you sure you want to end it? And sure enough, it's gone. Okay, so it stopped. Now, there are more methods, much more uh, ingenious than just changing your uh, output type to Windows application. So mostly when people create malware, they use something called a rootkit. And a rootkit creator will uh, run, it will uh, hide itself from the task manager, and it will hide itself from any kind of a directory search so you can't see what's on the disk. However, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what I want to show you, so the best thing you can do right now is just search in the task manager and kill the applications that you don't like. So, Notepad. Nobody wants Notepad. Let's get rid of him and end the process, and sure enough, Notepad is gone as well. Okay, so we got task manager. Now, here's another hint. Uh, if you're typing away here and you, t and you see the word keystrokes txt, and you open it up and you notice that all of your keystrokes have been logged here, that would probably be a big hint that something is wrong. Let me show you that uh, a, a designer of malware is probably not going to use keystrokes.txt for his file name. What might he use? Or she? We won't blame just the guys, will we? So when we come into our place where we create the keystrokes.txt file, the user might say, or the hacker might say, well, actually, most people would think that something called printer.dll would be a perfectly normal thing to see in your computer. You know, DLL files, we never look at them. But there's no reason why you can't name a text file with a DLL extension. Let's see if it works. So keystrokes.txt becomes printer.dll. Oops, that's not del, DLL. Well, nobody would expect that a DLL file is anything but an executable file that your system needs. And don't delete them. They're there for a reason. But we just are renaming our text file with a DLL extension. Let's see what that does when we run it. Okay, the application's up and running. Now let's go browse our folders. As you can see, printer DLL is now on the list here. So if I were to, let's say, create a new folder and then give it a name here, I'm going to call this thing XYZ and press enter. Now, printer DLL, it seems pretty innocent, but if I try to open it with, and let's see, what can I open it with? Let's see, I'm going to select a program from the list and I'm going to choose Notepad, and I don't want to always use Notepad, but I'm going to use it this time. And sure enough, it's a DLL file, but really it's a text file. And so disguising your file as a DLL is one way that you could fix and uh, throw people off. So 
don't be uh, too trusting about all the files that are on your computer. Let's go up to the part where we created our new file. So the new file was called uh, right here, where we created printer DLL. So after we've uh, created this file, we're going to set the attributes to hidden. So if I type in file, there is a uh, method called set attributes. So what I want to do is set the attributes. First of all, get the attributes of the, of the file, and then add a new one. So I'm going to use the or uh, method here. Okay, and so this single line of code will add the attribute called hidden to our file. Okay, before we go ahead and execute this program, I want to show you where file attributes are on your operating system. So for some of you, this is uh, things you've seen before, but if not, this is quite interesting. So you can see the printer DLL is on my uh, documents folder right now. Let's do a right click and choose properties. And you can see that there is a attribute called read only, hidden, and archive. So hidden is the one we're interested in right now. So if I choose hidden and click OK, it disappears. It's hidden. It's still there, but we just can't see it. So if you want to turn off uh, and turn on that option, we can go into the control panel. And this is Windows 7, so a little bit different than what you would expect in uh, maybe the Windows 10 or newer. And let's choose appearance and personalization. And there is an item called show hidden files and folders. And so here we go, folder options. And there is hidden files and folders. Right now it just says show them. Well, that is not shown by default, so most users would never go in and turn this on. But if we click OK, you can see that printer DLL is there, as long as desktop I and I and something else called DS Store. So the reason why files are hidden is because usually they're just messy things that the operating system is using, and it's just better to hide them so you don't stumble over them or accidentally change them. But in our case, it's kind of nice if we can set that attribute to hidden programmatically. Well, let's go back and change it to not hidden, click OK, and let's go back and change our preferences, oops, not that one, let's do show again and do not show hidden files. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. This is not a hidden file. All right, let's run the program and see if it'll hide the file. So we go ahead and run start and let's see what happens. So the program is getting up and running is it running? Let's go ahead and create a new folder and type in a folder name, ASDF. And as soon as I start typing some keystrokes, the uh, DLL file is hidden away. It disappeared. So it's still running in the background quite normally, but that would be one other obfuscation process that you would have to be alert, alerted to if you were looking for some malware. So two ways that you can check to see what's not on your, or what you don't want on your computer. One is go to your task manager and see what's there. Let's see, key logger is what we're looking for. Also, you can choose to look for hidden files and folders here sh showing the hidden ones. So those two are pretty lame ways to uh, hide your files, just disappearing the icon and making your folders hidden. But it might be enough to fool a lot of people. So there are more elaborate ways to get into using rootkits and things like that, but like I said earlier, that's not going to be the scope of our message here. I'm only trying to show you that uh, these kind of pieces of software are pretty easy to run and to uh, plant on other people's computers. So don't accept candy from strangers, I guess, is the, is the uh, message. So the way that most people would get infected with a piece of software like this is through an email attachment where it says, uh, you know, please see the attached document and download it. You could write this software in C Sharp, as we did here. You could also write it using Visual Basic for applications. So you could send somebody a spreadsheet and use almost the exact same code. And that Excel spreadsheet is spying on what you're typing, and the user has no idea that you have a, a piece of malware. So people like uh, Yahoo have been hacked with an attachment that came in an email to an employee and they opened it and a program like this was able to give the hackers access to that person's account and then to other places on the network. So I guess the lesson is don't accept candy from strangers, don't take attachments on emails, and uh, certainly don't allow permissions for things to run unless you're absolutely sure you know what they are. So here we go, that's the end of our message here. Uh, remember, as a final warning, this is malware that you can use to spy on people, and so 
Treat this as if you were to have a video camera. You know, you're not allowed to take your cell phone and plant it in somebody's bedroom or you're not allowed to uh, spy on people's uh, records anywhere. So it's illegal and you'll get in trouble and you'll go to jail if you're using any kind of methods that way. So this is only for a purpose to see how programs can really spy on you without you knowing. Okay, well that's a conclusion now. Let's go and do some more security lessons in further videos.